This video is for business leaders who want to learn or train others how to use creativity to increase their own grit and continuously improve professional skills. Watch to the end for bonus material on using creativity uh, to generate variety in your deliberate practice and a recommended video on how to use uh, some principles and concepts from neuroscience to be more creative and notice more. I introduced the idea uh, that grit, something that on the surface seems the opposite of creativity, is often reliant on it. Uh, imagine just how boring grit would be if for weeks, months, e and years you spend moving toward the same primary masterful ultimate goal that you're trying to go towards uh, and you did it by doing the exact same thing or the exact same practice every day for years identical in a word that would suck but far worse it would radically increase your odds you'd quit before you achieved your gritty end goal habits underline almost everything associated with grit neuroplasticity which is rewiring of your brain and success. Unfortunately, our brain habituates, or in another word, gets bored, adapts, or becomes desensitized quite quickly. So this is when you get that new novelty, when you try that new meal. You might love the meal. You might love the your new boyfriend or girlfriend. And it's there's uh, a novelty, but that novelty wears off or diminishes over time. That is the essence of habituation. And it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing. It means the novelty goes away and it's no longer so intriguing anymore. That's actually an indication of mastery at the current level. If you're talking about skills um, is when something becomes so easy, it's boring. But the problem with that, that of course, is that only gets us to our certain level. Like all of us can walk pretty good. So it's not a fascinating, uh, exciting activity. Uh, therefore, we don't even pay attention. We're not even conscious of it at, at any level anymore. Um, but nobody really wants to spend years or even decades doing something the exact same way to master or succeed at anything. Boredom and frustration are probably the main reason you and everyone else quit teaching yourself guitar, donated to the massive guitar orphanage at the secondhand store, like most people do. This is where creativity. Uh, uh, another learned skill, by the way, uh, can save your sanity, success, and stick to also known as grit. So three things that will help you stay gritty are your passion or bliss. You, ha you have to need, want, or care so much about reaching your destination, about doing this activity with excellence that you're willing, even enthusiastic about hours of daily practice, uh, the hours of daily practice it typically takes to succeed at anything that is a high or uh, is at a high or masterful level. Excuse me. Novelty, that is finding a unique, varied, and unexpected ways of practicing each of the micro skills that make up the entire skill set that supports you moving toward your destination or end result. So novelty is one of the critical things. The other one is, the third one is, so it's passion, novelty, and creativity itself, which is the means by which you create the novelty to keep you and your brain from getting too bored or frustrated while working at the top edge of your skill where failure is at least as common as success. That's how you know you're practicing at the right level to achieve mastery is by spending at least about 50% of your time not succeeding at your goal, 50% or more of your time not succeeding because it's that high of a level. It's that much of a struggle for you to do it well at that level. So uh, welcome to the bonus material. Thank you for watching this far. There are three ways to exercise your creativity skill and create variety in your deliberate practice. And those are to slice it up. So this is take your whole skill, think of it like a loaf of bread and take that loaf of bread and slice it into the thinnest possible slices you can. That's exactly what you wanna do. In this case, you wanna take your larger skill, whatever that happens to be, 
slice it into the thinnest possible slices you can that give you micro skills, which can be practiced on their own. That is that one little piece can be practiced and mastered at a very high level without being distracted by all the other related pieces that normally go into that skill, that activity. Think of it as slicing a loaf of bread as thin as possible. We've already talked about that. I'm ahead of myself. So in my two to five, and let me give you an example of this. In my two to five-year-old English class, I sliced the pronunciation of the names of single letters into fractions of phonemes. Now, phonemes are basic units of speech like ma, me, m, b, p, right? So they're usually specific singular sounds. Um, but you can even go below that. You can go into subunits, or at least that's what I'm going to claim because not all phonemes are a single sound in in my mind, at least. So let me give you an example of probably the most difficult one for especially young kids to say, but also that one of the longest pronoun pronounced letters in our alphabet is W. So that could literally become, instead of W, it becomes D, A, B, O, Y, U. So that's an example. And literally for at this age and at this level, I could literally just go or you 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 sorry wrong one and then become d a b o y u d a b o y u w w something like that. So that's just an example of it. But you could do this with any skill. So. Now the thing is, you take the same concept, you've sliced your bread. Now if you could put your bread, loaf of bread back together, now I want you to start slicing in a different place. So maybe you started an eighth of an inch from the end of the loaf. This time I want you to start three-eighths of an inch from the end of the loaf and start slicing there and now slice it. So in essence, you're basically slicing uh, in half. That is, you take the last half of one of your micro skills and merge it with the the first half of the next micro scale. So you've tried what we just talked about. Now you move your slices over. So you're now merging two pieces that are side by side within the larger scale if they go together. This can't always work, but the idea is you start and end your micro scale. You divide your larger scale into micro scales at different places. So you're slicing at different places. So then you merge them together and you get a whole micro skill that starts and ends at a different place. So in adult classes, I do this where I slice two words uh, like this and practice saying them together. That is at the end of one word and the beginning of another word. Uh, we do this naturally, but unconsciously as native speakers. So let me give you an example of that. Winter vacation. Now, when we say winter vacation, we don't say winter vacation. In fact, we say win turve vacation. So turve is, of course, the end of winter and the beginning of vacation. So I could practice with students at the appropriate level going turve. And I could slice that up even further to go back to my initial one, which is I could go t -r -v a And especially the V and the R are spe specifically very challenging for most Asian speakers, which would include in the three countries I've taught in, which was China, Korea, and Japan. They all have a heck of a time with R in particular, and Japanese people have a lot of problems with the V too. I can't recall about the other countries. So the next one is you turn your practice of micro skills, however you define them, into the simplest possible game that's still fun, challenging, and can be assigned some kind of point system or progress system. So this has been my saving grace when we're talking about the two-year-olds who keeping them even mostly engaged for 20 minutes is a challenge. So I have a few different activities I do. I take a, a card. I should have brought my cards with me to do this demonstration. I'll turn sideways. I take just a card and it's just got a flash card on it and I throw it in the air and it spins and it goes up in the air. Now, while to we adults, that's like, so what? You can throw something in the air and catch it. To 
two-year-olds, but even to the five-year-olds, this is fascinating and fun. So it might be the letter L. So it'd be like, okay, everybody, I throw it in the air and they have to say O-O-L, O-O-L, or O-O-Lemon, O-O-Like, whatever it happens to be. So as long as it's in the air, so it's like O-O-O-O-O, O-Lemon, O-O-Lemon. Each time I catch it, it stops and they just love it. Silly, but there's actually a count, right? Speed or number of times said. So that's the sound spin. I have another one called laser touch. And this is just simply because we're at the time of this recording, uh, COVID is still a concern. I can't be within about six or eight feet of the students because they want to keep uh, minimize the chance of COVID being spread um, uh, among them and between the teacher if because everybody has that risk, right? So essentially I have to stay a distance from the kids at all times. So there's no high fives, there's no playing with Frisbees or other fun things I like to do. So instead I wanted fun reinforcements that I could do at a distance. So I got a little laser pointer. They try, they say their name, right? I'm, I'm Miho, I'm Satoki, whatever their name is, just saying I'm plus their name after they've done that, I reinforce them with the laser. So I point the laser at the ground and they can kind of, instead of doing the, as they call it, a high touch, which we call a high five, which is a fun reinforcement for kids, it's a laser touch. So simply put, they do the activity, they get to get rewarded or reinforced with the laser. Uh, not really a game, but it really works. And then the other one is uh, rhythm, chants, and gestures works extremely well at these levels. And in fact, I do a clapping game with increasing tempo, even with adults to really help them with fluency. So this would be something like, uh, literally I've been using the uh, the Queen song, We Will Rock You. So it'd be like, ah, ah, eh, ah, ah, apple, ah, ah, eh, ah, ah, apple, or ah, ah, apple, whatever it is, just simple, silly things that keep them engaged. So if you can gamify anything and you can do this as adults, I assure you, not just with playful things like this, um, you can do the same thing for anyone at any level, at any age, at any skill and make it into a game. Think of how many uh, adults play games and using that. So for example of that, I'm constantly striving to use wordplay, especially now, be self-amusing, figures of speech, uh, grouping concepts and uh, ideas into groups of three in all of my videos and all of my stuff. Uh, and phrases, when I write these scripts or outlines, I also strive to write them faster every time while maintaining or increasing the quality of the content. So to stay articulate, to stay clever in my wording, if I, if in fact I've achieved that, I don't know, but I'm striving for it. These are all examples of tracking it. So for professional skill, games just uh, games just make sure uh, when you're doing games for professional level skills. Excuse me, just make sure that you have some component that is objectively measurable. So it could be countable, like. Um, uh, number of minutes, minimizing the number of win minutes, maximizing the number of times you make a certain statement in your sales pitch, uh, or finding the optimized number of times to do something in a sales pitch, which increases your persuasiveness, things like that. Uh, other things you can do, which are more of a qualitative and is actually better in a sense for our brain, more recognizable to our brain than using numerical things is to use trackable things like relative relationships or vectors, faster, taller, heavier, longer, cheaper, more interesting. So it's a qualitative, but it is er, and our brain is actually far more sensitive at that than writing things on a numerical scale. We're more accurate at comparing two things to one another as indicated by um, Daniel Kahneman in his book, uh, Daniel Kahneman, Oliver Siboney and Cassar Sunstein's book, Noise. So they talk about that. So there's those things you can do. Just anything that gives you a way to objectively track progress that of course a third party 
could objectively also measure. So now go be creative and gritty and amused while mastering your skill. If you enjoyed this video, share the love by sharing this video. And finally, my recommended video for today is um, Reflect More to Notice More. This is about using your reticular activating system and how to train it so that you notice things in your environment which support not only your creativity, but also a lot of other things in terms of innovation and stuff like that. And this has been Crush It Club 244 Creative Grit. My name is Tim B. Green. Bye for now.